Welcome to a new season of Branson Talk. I'm your host, Christopher James. Thank you to all of our loyal listeners over the year. And if you are a new listener, I urge you to go to BransonTalk.com and see the over 200 separate episodes that we have of Branson Talk, talking about every topic that you can possibly think of. But this week, we are debuting our next season with a very, very interesting guest. And you all know him. If you've been to Branson, Missouri, you have seen this gentleman somewhere, whether it be Silver Dollar City, his own show that he has occasionally, or maybe in the Patsy Cline tribute show, or in one of the other dozen venues that he appears in. Of course, I'm talking about Terry Wayne Sanders. Terry has hosted many events around town. He has been in Branson for years. He is a staple at Silver Dollar City with his many, many characters that he does. And I've been trying to get Terry on the show for a while, but our schedules are crazy. He's almost as big of a workaholic as yours truly. And we'll talk about that. We'll find out why. I hope you enjoy our Branson talk. We're taking kind of a new turn this year. What we're doing is we're doing a longer interview with each of our entertainers, our business personnel, our public figures. And then I take time after the interview to go over a few different questions and topics that we're going to break up and release as many little episodes to uh, give you some more insight. And what we do with Branson Talk is try to make them a little bit different, right? We we don't want to just promote a show. We want to promote our, our guest venues and so on but we want you to get to know them that's the whole point of this they're not commercials okay we don't get paid by the venues to do these we've never once been paid it'd be nice to be paid but we've, we've never once been paid to promote a particular venue in one of our branson talk episodes but do take a minute to go to bransontalk.com if you are listening to this on itunes please subscribe please Take a minute to subscribe and leave us some feedback on there. We may have a little contest with anybody that leaves feedback on Branson Talk this year. But this is a brand new episode. I've wasted enough of your time telling you what you're going to hear, so let's actually hear it. My interview with Terry Wayne Sanders. You've been in Branson a little while. I've actually, a few I've days. watched a few days. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 38 for, years. 38 years. Honest to goodness. Yeah. 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 But you came like in the 60s, right? Uh, to- yes. Around 1965, my grandfather, mm-hmm. Lee Sanders, brought me and my family here, and we went to Silver Dollar City. Now, back then, we could afford to go there because Silver Dollar City was free. You paid a dollar twenty-five to go to Marvel Cave. Oh, I see. So, so it was just a vacation. You vacation. were just here on vacation. Then. Yeah, but, but the most amazing thing was I was so excited because when I got to Silver Dollar City, uh, oh, my gosh. Uh, I told my grandfather, I said, someday I am going to be here. And he just laughed. He's like, no, really, because I fell in love with Silver Dollar. I thought, man, look, you've got the steam train. you got all these things I love, the uh-huh. hillbillies, all of it. So, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's, that's when the seed was planted. Yeah. And so how old were you when you, when you uh, Let's see, 65. I was six years old. Oh, and you remember that? Oh, I, I don't mean, remember what it I did was last boom week. at first. Oh my, yeah, <laughs> How funny. Yeah, no, I do. I mean, everything was here, and of course, not only did we go to Silver Dollar, we went to a music show, and uh-huh. I said the same thing. I said, "Oh, I'd love to be on stage." Oh, the comedians, you know, because oh, that was always you know my forte. Anyway, I loved watching even at six comedians years old. at six years of age. You know, because yeah. Jerry watching? Lewis, Jerry Lewis, oh my, oh, you yeah. know, that was big. Don Knotts was big because he was doing you know the Ghost of Mr. Chicken after he left you know the Andy Griffith show and mm-hmm. all that that whole genre, if you will. But it was all physical comedy of the old school types you know even yeah. george burns you know people like that i was intrigued by them yeah and of course we also went to shepherd the hills and i said oh i'd love to do that because i wanted to be little pete you know uh-huh. and uh, so yeah it all has uh, come full circle i'm actually living my dream because i work at all these places i'm having still the time of my life after 38 years of yeah. doing this it's still exciting and uh, now i see next generations coming up and you're still alive, <laughs> you're still alive. <laughs> we didn't see that coming yeah, yeah. Hello. <laughs> we would have guessed you'd be the first gone. Yeah. Yeah, in our Deadpool, you were like number three. <laughs> well, um, yeah. so what, you've always wanted to be an entertainer. You went to college, though, right? Yeah, you yeah, went- yeah. Uh, you know, um, my senior year in high school, we had what was called uh, 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 career day. Uh-huh. And we had to get serious about what we're going to do because I always thought, well, I'll just be a comedian, you know. Well, yeah, why right. not? 
And my parents were like, mm, no. And so I looked around Mountain Grove, Missouri, my hometown, and saw Lynn Hurt. He was the family mortician, okay? Uh-huh. And I, Lynn, he always had the nicest suits. He drove, you know, a Lincoln Continental. He had well coiffured. I mean, just beautiful, thick hair, but not a one out of place. And I thought, okay. Now, that would be the lifestyle right there. You know, he's living a good life, and he's helping out. You know, there's a need. There's a need. Eventually, yeah. You know, sure. <laughs> and so I thought that. And then, of course, uh, you have to be rather good at science, which I wasn't. Mm. Now, all the arts, uh, you know, I did that, you know, drawing, acting, uh, sports. Oh, he was fast, blah, blah, blah. But when it came to the the, the, the real stuff, no. Yeah. And so... Uh, I graduated in 1977. I'm going to go to SMS then, now MSU now. And, uh, of course, my parents said, well, what are you going to study? I said, well, acting. Oh, son. Oh, son. How about uh, Votech? Let's, let's, yeah, let's right. work it yeah. out. I said, let me try it. If I don't do it, if it doesn't happen, I'll do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Oh, good. Oh, good. So they were thrilled. But before I even graduated, because uh, I went started in the fall of 77 in 1980, I got a job at Silver Dollar City in the mm-hmm. daytime. And at nighttime, I was working at the Corn Crib Theater doing the Toby Show with Shad Heller, who was my hero, because not only was he from Silver Dollar City, he was on the Beverly Hillbillies. Oh, I mean, I love that show. Oh, my. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that also sensed the whole deal, too. I thought if Silver Dollar City is good enough for the Beverly Hillbillies, it's good enough for me. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Growing up, I watched uh, Beverly Hillbillies mm-hmm. and Andy Griffith oh, like yeah. every single day yeah every day I'm trying to get my kids into it they don't oh, understand man. the black and white situation oh how funny which oh, how funny. I didn't as a kid there was a point where I'm like when did they get color oh like, I remember. in the world oh yeah you know yeah. I remember watching tv shows because we always had a black and white tv until probably about the early 70s and it would always say in color yeah. at the bottom of the screen it's like no it's not <laughs> <laughs> Liar. There's, there's even hotels here now that still say color tv, <laughs> color TV. Yeah, <laughs> saying, no. <laughs> there's one down the street air conditioning <laughs> What? Yeah, what? Yeah, oh, no. Fancy. <laughs> want to get the Wi-Fi soon. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Whenever I see that one hotel, we have color television. television. I just think funny? it is. So what did your parents do? Oh, well, my I mean, goodness. Okay, what uh, were their occupations? Uh, my mother started out as a, uh, uh, well, whenever I was growing up, she and the whole family uh, – Grandparents included all worked at the Brown Shoe Factory in Mountain Grove. Mm-hmm. And then uh, my uh, father passed away early on in our lives. And so for a while, it was just the three of us, my mom and my brother, Leland. And then my mother remarried. And I'll never forget because it was the night of the moonwalk. And it's like, Uh-oh. oh, they had gone off to Oklahoma to get married. And so we stayed with my aunt and uncle and we watched them go on the moon. Uh-huh. Uh, but my uh, new father, Frank Vansel, a wonderful man. And he has really given us a life and a lifestyle that I probably would not have had with my real father, to be honest with you. And it was wonderful. Frank came into our lives at just the right time. And so my mom ended up being a at stay-home mother. She mm-hmm. did not have to work. And that was great. And my father, he had several uh, businesses. He had uh, Pioneer Amusement. So he had this route where he had jukeboxes pinball machines, and pool tables. Oh, that's awesome. It was. And we had a big full basement. We had built a brand new house, and we all got to help build it. You know, okay, boys, you got to do this. You got to do that. And it was so exciting because in our basement, we had a pool table. Oh, we were the hot spot. And you know what was in the other room? Jukebox. And oh, yeah, it was amazing. So we had all these great things, the pinball machines. So we really had a wonderful life growing up, you know. Uh, And so it was, that was uh, the sea planet. So uh, my father did quite well with all that. Then he sold that business and went into the CB business. Mm -hmm. Oh, that was a big thing for a while. Oh, yeah, and I remember. of course, oh, yeah. And then he uh, got several jobs. Of course, he became a circuit judge in Mountain Grove, or really Wright County, and uh, ended up with a uh, juvenile detention center in Mountain Grove. And so he kept, it really, and it, was, it behooved us. He had a lot of experience with me. <laughs> so, yeah, so yeah. it all worked out. So, yeah, so it was. It has been a wonderful ride. You know? uh-huh. So you were over at Silver Dollar City then as one of yeah. your first oh, yes. entertainment. Entertainment jobs. Type yeah. jobs. Yeah. Uh, but you were just starting out kind of as an understudy, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah, just, absolutely. As a matter of fact, Shad had come up to me at Silver Dollar and, oh, Terry, I've been watching him. Boy, I like what you're doing. I think you've got some good timing there. Would you like to work for me? I was thrilled. I mean, mm-hmm. my hero said I had the thing, the talent, you know, whatever, you know, you want to put the label on. And so he got me over there. And of course, we're talking about this and that. And he takes me back to the concession stand. Now, here's how you make popcorn. Now, here's how you pour the uh, drink. Yes. And here's those, surprise, I, I'm surprise. sorry. Welcome Yo, to the yeah. business. <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait a minute. <laughs> Raggy. So, yeah. But he said, now, those are the basics because you want to learn how to work. Because you know what, this acting business, it is a business. And there's days that you get to be on that stage and you will shine and you'll have a good time. There's also days you're going to have to be waiting tables or doing whatever. And he was my mentor. He taught me about the business. And I always thought, you know what, this man, listen to him. 
Uh-huh. And that's always been one of my models. Keep working. Keep getting better. Try to get better. Yeah. Because I don't want to be flipping burgers. I don't want to be doing you know these other things. I always want to be in the business. Mm-hmm. And I've been really very blessed to work day and night for the last 38 years. Now, now do you do it? Because like me, uh, you have extremely low self-esteem and you're self-conscious. Because <laughs> <laughs> I constantly... <laughs> I think this is a, a running thread I've noticed with comedians all over. Yes. Is uh, I'm constantly worried somebody's going to walk up to me, mm-hmm. even after being at the showbo for 12 years, oh, and yes. come up and say, all right, like, seriously, enough is enough. Oh, we, we, you don't know what you're doing. <laughs> like, oh, yes. Here's how you, here's how you make the Admiral's beef <laughs> <laughs> back there. Yeah, no, but yeah. I'm paranoid about that. Uh-huh. And because times change so much, especially in Branson. Oh, like, my. Uh, yeah. You never know what's going on. Right. So that's why I have podcasts. I have yes. stores. I have condo. My wife's like, what are you doing? You have, like, yeah. 12 different company names. Because. I said, because could one could go at any minute. That's right. No. Mm-hmm. You know, I have not ventured out like that as much. As I should, and I need to, but I, I have some things you in the probably back should burner. because we were going to yeah, talk yeah. to you after this. Oh, yes. About- <laughs> oh, by the way, I haven't told you yet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so sorry. But it's been a fun ride. <laughs> no, you know, I'm, I'm sort of like that, though. Uh, yeah, insecure, originally very insecure, mm-hmm. you know, and uh, anytime I made someone upset or they didn't laugh or that's not funny, yeah. oh, my, you know, I would take it personal. And I, I even, I used to find almost, I don't want to say a depression, but like with the Brashers, I remember one night in particular, I had possibly the best show of my entire life at that point. Yeah. And I remember walking off stage and I got into this this funk, if you will, because I thought I can never, ever duplicate that again. It's all downhill from here. Yeah, right. And then, of course, I've learned over the years after doing this again and again and again, as you well know, there's always going to be those great nights. There's going to be those bad nights. And whenever you know you've got a joke that works and you do it and it doesn't get the response or they look away, they even boo, uh-huh. what do you do? They boo? Where, where are you working? Uh, well, no, I was watching you that one night. <laughs> oh, no, yeah, I right. mean, no, no. <laughs> that <laughs> no. was the Halloween show. Oh, yeah. <laughs> hey, trick or treat. So, yeah, you know, you just learn to get a tough skin and you just take it all with a grain of salt. With the world being so politically correct anymore, holy socks. I mean, I used to do this uh, whole routine uh, about religions, not Mm -hmm. just one. Mm -hmm. But, I mean, I covered all the bases. You trashed them all. Yes. I I, I said I was raised a Baptist, you know, and, of course, uh, you know, end of this whole thing. But I remember one night, again, it was early on at the Brashers, a lady came down front because one of the religions I mentioned was – Catholicism. Okay. She was a Catholic. Well, you shouldn't do that. You should not do that. That's just not funny. I said, okay, help me out here. I said, did you not hear me talk about the Baptist or the Methodist or the Lutherans? And I went down the list. She goes, well, that doesn't matter. Just don't talk about the Catholics. Yeah. And then I said, oh, right then. I said, Sanders, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? If they have that narrow of a mind, yeah, nothing that I would ever do would ever change them. Because right. the next night is going to be a Methodist or the next night would be a bat, you know. I, so I covered everybody. Yeah. But you do a lot of character work. I do. You know, I when I first came to. here to this town, I watched certain comedians and they were always that same personality. Uh-huh. And, of course, another influence in my life, I loved watching Bugs Bunny cartoons mm-hmm. because he would change personas. You know, he was still that bunny underneath there, but he would be a female, he'd be male, he'd be the Western kind of guy, he'd be, you know, whatever. Right. And I thought, oh, that's the way to do it. Yeah. You know, and he's successful. I think Bugs Bunny probably made a lot of money. Uh, probably. So, yeah, you know, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Anyway, so, uh, yeah. And, of course, all my heroes, you know, uh, especially Don Knotts, you know, uh, Barney Fife. And to this day, I still love doing Barney uh, at functions or wherever because he was beloved by all. Yeah. There was never, ever a negative pr- word or anything said about Barney Fife. There's because- a great biography, Andy and, and Barney – or Andy and um, – uh- Don. Andy and Don. Andy okay. and Don. It's great. It goes over their personal really? relationship, and oh I just goodness. finished it a few months really? ago. Really? I want to borrow it because I, I, I don't have that. I would love to read that. Yeah, it's amazing. Oh but they say that, that yeah. no one ever said anything bad about him. He was so. great. You know, the only bad thing they said, they were mad because he left the TV show because once the, he left the Andy Griffith show, it went downhill. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It turned to color, and they lost Barney. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Now, a lot of people, because my onstage persona is a character, mm-hmm. okay, whether people believe it or not. It right. is a character. Right. You know, it's you have to be on stage, right? Right. And so when people meet me in real life, they always think I'm either in a bad mood or upset right. or, right. you know, oh, what's fine. wrong? Why aren't you smiling? What, right. what yeah. happened? Uh, do you get that? I mean, do people expect you to be? Yeah, they, they do. And I, I just try to just be me. Even when I do Homer Lee, I've done Homer Lee since I was with the Wilkinson Brothers, which started in 1983. And Homer Lee was always just an extension of Terry Wayne Sanders. Mm-hmm. I was always this happy go lucky guy, but Homer Lee was just a little amplified, a little bit bigger than life. And so I have just trained myself. And, you know, that 
that's who I am anyway. So just just be you, you know, and make them happy. Right. And so that's always been the adage, you know. Uh, there are days uh, like you where you know, I, I might be distracted or thinking about, you know, oh, my boys, I've got to make sure this is done. My wife wanted that done. And Homer, are you okay? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm fine, you know. But, yeah, I just I try to be really aware of that because I'm also old school. I remember reading and watching people like Joan Crawford. You answer every single letter. You mm-hmm. do that. You know, all, uh, Betty Davis did that. Jimmy Stewart did that. He answered every single letter. Yeah. And even added things extra into it, you know. You know, he yeah. did a picture of Harvey. Well, there's old Harvey, the the pool. Uh, the right, right. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. yeah, and you do that at your shows, just like we do. You right. like greet yeah. everybody after the show because Branson's important. a little different. Yeah, you know, yeah. it's very funny whenever we have the names coming to town. They're like, you got a what? Yeah, press the flesh. Really? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because this is a different bird, you know. And a lot of people don't understand how Branson mm-hmm. really works, and it, it is, is very different, especially when you go from Branson and work outside. You're you were saying you're about to go and work on a cruise. Yes. Which yes. is an, an entirely different ball game. <laughs> yeah. I mean, have you worked outside of Branson much? Or uh, You know, I do a lot of road shows. You know, people mm-hmm. book me. Uh, it's usually it's like the fundraisers or whatever, just some special event. And I love that. You know, I've flown several places, which has always been exciting. I like that you know, because sometimes if you get a nice corporate gig, oh, uh, praise the Lord, we're going to be able to make two house payments, honey. Uh, Yay! <laughs> so that's good. Uh, but, uh, yeah, no, I've never really done, you know, a, a long gig in Vegas or wherever, things like that. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. But you do your own variety show every once in a while. Yes, I do. For five years in a row, I did Homerly and Friends, which is kind of a generic name. And uh-huh. really to start out, uh, we have a friend of the family who has started uh, something when she was 16. She went on a mission trip and uh, she uh, went over there with all these toys and all these great things. And uh, the thing that the kids were impressed with, they, I mean, they said, thank you for the toys, but do you have a pencil? We want you to teach us to write our name. Yeah. And she said, at home, I had a drawer full of pens and pencils and Crayolas. And she said, that's what I'm going to do. That's my mission, to come back and teach these kids how to draw a color, but also how to write their name and how to teach them to read. And so uh, at the age of 16, she had this 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 vision. This is what my mission is. Mm-hmm. And so I said, you know what? We're going to help you out. We're going to make sure those kids have all the pencils or whatever they need. And so uh, the first show I ever did was Homerly and Friends Reunion Show. <laughs> and so I thought, I'm going to get all the the uh, Breischlers back together, which we did. And someone said, well, you know, you work with more than just the Breischlers. So I got some scoop from, you know, the, the Wilkinson Brothers, the Toby Show. We had some original members from that show. We, and we did all these things and all these people from our past or my past. And so it was a great success. We sold out two weeks in advance. The day of the show, we uh, turned away over 200 people. Oh, wow. And so, yeah, what a, just praise, a one night praise thing? Praise the Lord. Yeah, oh, just one time thing. You mm-hmm. know, because my schedule is just so crazy. But I said, we can put together a show. Mm-hmm. And do it once, and that's it. And usually the dress rehearsal is the day of the show. Oh, Honest yeah, to goodness. Yeah. Because I say, you're a professional. You guys are professional. Here's what I want you to do. Here's the lineup. If you have questions, let me know. Get your tracks to uh, the sound man. And here we go. Yeah, there you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that's pretty so, simple. So, yeah, so we've done it for five years. This year we took the year off. I said, we've done it for five years, and every year we have to outdo ourselves. Let's all take a break. Let our bodies rest. Let our uh-huh. minds rest, you know. Because as you know, trying to put together a show anyway is just, it's harrowing. You want it to be good and you want it to be better than the one before. And how can we ever top that? Well, you do. Yeah. But it's like, you know, let, let's all just, you know, take it. Now, next year, I've got some big plans, really oh, big plans. Good. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you'll have to tell, tell me about them later. <laughs> oh, so sure, sure, sure. And secret. I'm not going to name it William Shatner. Uh, uh, oh, okay. So, yeah, no, but <laughs> wouldn't that be nice? Yeah. So, yeah, so that's the whole thing. But, you know, I like it because it's a charity show. Uh, my friends all pitch in. We we all do a great thing for somebody who uh, can use it, and it, it's a legitimate thing. It's not like it's all about me. No, yeah. it's Homerly and friends. Mm-hmm. And, of course, the people who come to my shows, they're my friends. Mm-hmm. Over all these years I've been here, I look out in that audience, and I can tell you where I met that person. I know where they're from, and it just makes my heart happy that they mm-hmm. come back year after year. Oh, that's great. It is. It's, great. It's, it's a good thing. But you've been over at Silver Dollar City for a long time doing the characters. Years. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And we were just there the other day on Friday. Yes. And you scared my son. <laughs> <laughs> he was asking for it. He was asking for it. <laughs> yeah, you weren't even in character. That was the best part. Just... <laughs> <laughs> oh, <it's him>. <laughs> <laughs> so when you're there, I mean, yes. you were doing this, I, I assume. Scarecrow. The Scarecrow. Yes. Shows. And I, I heard some colorful uh, <laughs> <laughs> metaphors. <laughs> yes, I guess so. When you scare yeah. the people, or oh when my. you move, yeah. um, 
But he kept wanting to come back and wave and come back and yeah. wave. To... Yeah. Do you get to choose what characters you're doing during the yeah. day, or do they kind of tell no, you? No, no, or... no. I have been so blessed, honest to goodness. Uh, right now, well, no, not right now, because we just closed for uh, the regular season. But during the regular season, I play five characters a day, and I try to stack it. And it's just like a show. You go good, better, best. And what would be the best, you know, to greet people? So I do a warden. and He looks like an official, like a, a marshal or the sheriff. So he would be, you know, welcoming. Uh, we're safe and secure, and come on in. Uh, then I would do the scarecrow because it was the fall festival and that kind of fits in with everything and then uh, Colonel Paisley Paul Nail he's the banker in that white tux here mm-hmm. with a white hair oh my god of course and of where is he from the bank of Bug Tussle where do we get Bug Tussle from the Beverly Hillbillies that's mm-hmm. where Jed put his money in the bank in Bug Tussle and then uh, uh, Embalmer he's the undertaker mm-hmm. they've always had an undertaker at Silver Dollar City my hero was Wayne Milnes Wayne Milnes was the undertaker that I mean he captivated people he never spoke he never ever spoke yeah and would just reduce people to tears. I mean, just howling with laughter. Mm-hmm. And so uh, I base it on that. Now, my character, he will speak certain times. And he'll say, well, in my profession, people I work with rarely talk back. <laughs> yeah, that's So, nice. yeah, so, you know, you yeah. have that angle there. Then I end the day. It's Doc Harris, the German inventor who created the vile fire roller coaster. Ach, the Liebe sehr gut, sehr gut. Yeah. So yeah, so I but I just you know I just build it up from there, mm-hmm. and of course next year we have a new ride at Silver Dollar City, oh. Time Traveler, and uh, of course I'm looking at uh, uh, some a new character for that, and of course it would be sort of a steampunk type of thing because it's, this is very Jules Verne, oh, yeah. uh, the whole design of it all it is just amazing. So yeah, it looks incredible. It really does. We're so, yeah. very much into steampunk in our family. Oh good, so, good yeah, for you. our whole house is oh, steampunk, goodness. and yeah, yeah. Well, I saw the smoke coming out, and I was just wondering, you know. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's the crematorium. Oh, that's I see. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta go. See ya. Whoa, it's been fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, uh, so you have that going on. You have the Homer Lee show next year that you're going to be doing. Yes, but right yes, now yes. you're at, uh, of course, Patsy Klein and Klein. Friends yeah. here at the Americana. My second year. Always with friends. Always, Always with seeing friends. that's it. Isn't yeah. that nice? Cause you gotta have friends. Well, I guess my imaginary sure. friends <laughs> play with somebody else. I never. <laughs> but the voice. One of them. One of them bullies me really bad. No. Yes, Bless he speaks her. Italian. I have no idea what he's saying. But I don't it's not speak nice. Italian. I'm sure. I'm sure it's not. Hello. Oh. No. <laughs> prego, prego. Uh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Uh, I love being here with, of course, uh, C.J. Newsom. She does the tribute to Patsy Klein, And we're here on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Sundays. And we're gearing up right now for Christmas. We've been in, in rehearsals mm-hmm. for that. And that's what's also interesting about Branson, too. When we first went to Christmas in this crazy little town, everybody did all Christmas songs. Yeah. And all the people who came here at first go, oh, that's so nice. And then all of a sudden they go to another show. Well, we heard those songs over yeah. there. And then they just go to another show. We heard those songs over there, too. So now. We've all learned do the basics what make you really good and then give it a big flavor of Christmas. Yeah. And there's only so that. many Christmas songs. There I are. say this all the time. <laughs> yeah, you know, so yeah, so there see we're learnings and that's what we all need mm-hmm. to do. Just grow and learn, like, oh, okay, write that one down. That's yeah. that's important to know. I have a pet peeve, and, and yes, and it's not just you. Oh, good. It's, okay. <laughs> it's everybody. <laughs> but you alluded to something a few minutes ago, and it made me think of it. When people come up to me and say, you're great, you know, mm-hmm. that's my pet peeve. No, <laughs> it doesn't happen often. Uh, no, they come up, and they say, we love the show. What do you plan to do? What are you trying to you know, this yeah. is great. You're going to be something someday. Yeah, yeah. Like, that bothers me. Why are you because, still here? <laughs> yeah, or they want to know what your other job is. Yes, yes. Yeah. What else okay. do you do? Yeah. Um, and, you know, like you were saying, I've achieved everything I wanted to do. You know, I wanted to be able to make a living right. doing what I want. I wanted to uh, have my own radio show, have my own TV show. I've done right. it all. Like, yeah. You know, I'm happy. And so I get a little irritated when people think Branson is just a stepping stone. Right, right. Know? Uh, although I do the joke with our musical director. I, when I introduce him, I say, Branson, people perform in Branson twice in their life, once on the way up, once on the way back down. And it's great to have John back with us again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he loves Love that. It. Oh, that's funny. He loves that. that. Funny. But do you get a lot yeah. of people that do that? I mean, they know you do a lot of uh, things. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and thank goodness. And that's kind of been the key. You know, last year was my record year. 16 different jobs in the Branson area. Mm-hmm. And wow, it was a marathon, but it was worth it. It was fun. It was a great challenge. And that's mm-hmm. what I also like, too, uh, is a, ch- a good challenge. And that's why I also do that one-time-only show. How yeah. can we top that? And I think that's what keeps... You you creative, me creative, trying to do things. Uh, also, I like you know we talked earlier about you know stock lines, you yeah. know, and that's okay, good because they, it still works. If it still works, good for you, yeah. you know. Yeah. Now I get tickled. I, I've had people come up to me and ask me for uh, a joke, 
Share yeah. this with me. Can I borrow that one? And certain things, oh, sure, I'm not using that anymore. Sure. Now, what makes me laugh out loud, I will go see them somewhere, and they've not changed it. Mm-hmm. You know, oh, boy, that Richard Nixon, did you see it? <laughs> oh, my gosh. You've got to update. You know, you, yeah. yeah. So that, that's, that's one of my pet peeves. It's like, okay, you got to grow with it. Okay. Yeah. You use it, but. Yeah. We'll get back to our interview with Terry Wayne Sanders in just a few minutes. I just want to remind you to go to BransonTalk.com and check out the 200-plus episodes that we have on every topic that you can imagine in and around the Branson area. If you are a fan of Branson, Missouri, if you plan to visit Branson, Missouri, we have something for you. So please, that's BransonTalk.com. You'll see a full list of all of our episodes. And, of course, be sure to subscribe to us on the podcast on the iTunes there or Stitcher or wherever you listen but enough of that let's get back to my interview with Terry Wayne Sanders if you turn it, twist it, make it yours, great. Now I do Joan Rivers and some, I use some of her lines, you know, because they knew that was Joan, you know. Yeah. Oh, Elizabeth Taylor can we talk here? You know, yeah, yeah. mosquitoes see her and they say buffet, you know, because it works but that would be Joan, you know. Uh, for Barney Fife, I uh, make him updated a little bit but I still do, nip it, nip in the bud, my whole body is a weapon yeah. because it's stock lines that work, that's that character but you have to create your own stuff. Right. Uh, there's a, a man in Vegas who has done and, uh, of course, female impersonations uh, for a long time, but he did Joan for a long time. But his problem, he also learned the hard way, he was good friends with Joan. Mm-hmm. He would go down to the casino where she was working, start taking notes, and go back to his show and did her material. Oh, yeah. And although they were great friends, she sued him. She said, get your own stuff, buddy. Right. I just wrote that stuff. This is mine. Yeah. So, again, life lesson. Hello, you know. Yeah, yeah, do your yeah, own thing. Yeah, you know, yeah, do your yeah, own little yeah. spin on it. So, right. So there you go. There's a lesson for everybody. Lesson for everybody right there. You yeah. learn from us. That's right. Christopher That's and Terry right here. Right here. We're teaching you. And oh. we have some questions that questions? I sent to you. Oh, mm-hmm. my. Yes. Well, let's let's see what we can so do. So let's try them. a couple of these questions that All I have right. here that I sent right. to you. When you hear the word successful, who do you think of and why? Oh, my. Uh, Joan. Uh, we mentioned her a while ago, and I'll do it again. Joan Rivers. Uh, she has been through everything. She had been the the whole gamut of it all and kept persevering. She was fired countless times. She would go under different names to different clubs. Uh, she'd get fired. She'd go back the next week under a different name. Oh, we have someone new this week. We've got so-and-so. Mm-hmm. And she just kept trying because she knew she was good. And she just proved to everyone. And even in adversity, uh, her husband, Edgar, uh, bad manager, uh, she loved him, you know, had faith mm-hmm. in him, but he was a bad manager. Um, they lost the deal with Fox, the TV show. And uh, he went into a severe depression and ended up killing himself. A horrible thing that sunk her career for a while because no one would hire her. Well, her husband killed himself. Well, we can't have her on. She's not funny anymore. And so she said, I will show you all. They were $37 million in debt, okay, uh, because of a deal at QVC. They ended up selling the rights to Joan Rivers. And so she worked like a big dog. And she pulled herself up and was smart about it, much like you. Not just comedy, but she said, okay, I love jewelry. Let's see what we can do. Let's do this. How about this? How about beauty products, you know, Mm -hmm. creams, all that. Books. She wrote to 12 books and uh, also an inspirational speaker. So she started incorporating all these things. Yeah. Yeah. And so she ended up, whenever she died, four years ago, she had amassed $150 million in cash. Her apartment in New York just sold uh, for $28 million. Yeah. Do you like it? Uh, it's nice? very nice, you yeah. know. And I've not really changed much since, you know, uh, she was there, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. The towels, you know, I've changed yeah, the right, towels. Right. Yeah, but it's yeah. wonderful. It's, I call it home, really. And I <laughs> get good. to fly it's in, you know, every, every other night, you know, to be here for the show with Patsy Klein. But it, it's fun. You know, Chris Fast Space, you know, in New mm-hmm. York. Mm-hmm. Anyway, so, yeah. So, Joan, yeah, she just uh, showed us all. And I... I uh, I considered her a friend. I corresponded with her, and also I spent an entire day with her in Minneapolis. Mm -hmm. I got a deal through QVC, and so I was able to really talk with her, and it was great. She, I asked her, I said, "Why do you work so much?" She, I said, "You don't have to." She said, "I want to." She said, "If I can keep going, that's what I want to do." She goes, "I work so much though that also affords me time with my daughter Melissa and my grandson Cooper, Mm -hmm. and so I take them on trips." And she uh, had a heart of gold. Now on stage. She had a blue streak, which was funny. And I love that irreverence about her because she pulled it off. It was funny. But uh, if you ever worked for her, if you had children, she paid for their private schooling. Oh, wow. She took care of everybody. She would write and she 
signed all of her own checks. She yeah. knew where every dime went. But she had charities that she helped out or certain people. Mm-hmm. She did an amazing thing. Yeah. She and, she became a whole empire. Uh, she really was. Yeah. I mean, she did it. And she and whenever she died, she was on top of the game at 81 years of age. And, uh, you know, she was having some voice trouble. So they were just going to do a little scope down the throat to see what was wrong. And then if they found something, they were supposed to send her somewhere else. Well, they yeah. didn't. They did everything wrong. But, you know, uh, here we go, you know. Yeah. But, but people uh, will remember her. Oh, absolutely. Matter of fact, she had more al- accol- accolades. Accolades. There we go. There go. Uh, whenever I she don't know passed how to stand, away, I don't have I any. Know, so. I know. Yeah, I'm, well, I'm Walmart. Accolades, morals, <laughs> like all of these fancy words. I don't know. So why? Why? <laughs> Hygiene. Ooh, like, I, don't. I hate that one. So yeah. So uh, yeah. She ended, it was at the top of her game, and so the world just they were rather sad. Yeah. Like all of us were, you know, whenever she she uh, passed away. I so think, yeah, good question. But yeah, Joan Rivers, she was an inspiration and, and and taught us all just keep going, no mm-hmm. matter what, no matter how bad it is, keep going. Well, there you go. Yeah, Terry Sanders. Yes. What is something that you believe that other people think is insane? Oh um, my, hard work. Yeah. Hard work. You know what? I'm amazed anymore. I was raised where you work hard, you work for a company, and they take good care of you and blah, 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 and keep working hard. Um, and nowadays, I see so many of the youths, what is mm-hmm. a youth? Uh, the youth of today, they want that paycheck, but they don't want to work. They don't yeah. know how to work. And when you ask them to do things, oh, it's the end of the world. Well, I'm, then they quit, you know, and I'm just appalled and saddened. You know, because I get great satisfaction from hard work. Yeah. You know, I really do. And you're with me because we're in a business where we are looking for that affirmation, that uh, that applause, all those good things, you know. And so, yeah, I'm just really, uh, yeah, sad, you know, because I'm mm-hmm. just amazed. It's like hard work. Don't you think the Internet has had a ton to do with that, especially in the entertainment business? Mm-hmm. I was talking with somebody else, and it used to be you had to put together an entire act. Mm-hmm. Okay, you had to go out and start out. I started out with open mic nights. Mm-hmm. Yes. And we're your way up now you film something funny on your phone yeah you put it online you promote it you get a million people that watch it boom, boom, and boom, boom. that's yeah, it that's it yeah, that's all you have instantaneous fame mm-hmm. yeah for nothing for lots nothing. of times just being in the right place at the right time right and, and uh, yeah, and then just, the reality shows oh my. for entertainment, I think, are terrible. That's another question yeah. I get quite a bit: is Have you ever thought of going on uh, America's Got Talent? You know, and and yeah, I'll say no. It. And they're like, good, you shouldn't. Yeah, uh, but <laughs> no, yeah. no. Yeah. But we pick our entertainers, our music by a, it's a popularity contest, which I guess right. it really is. But right, but yeah, I'm just not much is for it those true shows. talent. Right, yeah, exactly. Oh no, no, especially like well, like with American Idol, there's a handful who have done well. Mm-hmm. Uh, the other uh, voice show. Uh, which is called, I think, The Voice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't see anyone coming out of there. They yeah. have all these great winners, and they are very, very talented. But what happened to them? Where yeah. are they at right now? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. amazing. Just an interview with somebody that was on America's Got Talent, mm-hmm. and he said, you know, I, I, I like watching the show. People get so excited, and the names become household names for a while. But then two weeks after the finale, nobody remembers the second place winner. No. And with uh, America's Got Talent, only a few have gone on to be really successful. Right. So in the meantime, you as an entertainer mm-hmm. have provided your services for a television show that's basically a commercial mm-hmm. for whoever wins. Right. You know, they're building them up right. over all those weeks. So sure. I just don't think much of the shows. Yeah. yeah. But But if you're listening and you want me on that show... Uh, with uh, his partner in crime, Terry Sanders, yes. we are right here. Yes. Just so saying. Give us a call. Out there. <laughs> call 1-800. <laughs> yes. So what is your favorite documentary or movie? Oh, uh, let's see. Growing up, uh, you know what? Wizard of Oz. Really? I have, I have that loved movie that movie. bothers me. From, really? It does. And it should. Mm-hmm. You know, for some people, like yourself, mm-hmm. uh, it can be terrifying. It is. Oh, my goodness. A, a young no. girl kills the first person she meets in a strange yes, land and yes, teams yes. up with three more people to continue to kill again. That's right. Yes, indeed. Basically what it is. And if you break it down, it's just two women fighting over a pair of shoes. A pair of shoes. That's but it. you know what? They are nice shoes. Are they? Oh, are you kidding? Have you seen them at the Smithsonian? Not only have I seen them, I have a pair. You do? In my home. Well, now they're in a safe deposit box. Mm -hmm. Yes. 
Yeah. Yes, yeah. they're worth it. So why do you like The Wizard of Oz? What uh, is it? It's complete fantasy, uh, you know, and it, it's it's wonderful. It's escapism because yeah. our world was gray. Growing up in Mountain Grove, you know, blah, 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 blah. You know, we were out on the farm because both sets of grandparents had farms and all that. And it was mundane and wonderful. But, you know, you always wanted those better things. And all of a sudden, you're whisked away in a horrible storm because we always have tornadoes in the Ozarks. How exciting. Ooh, <laughs> yeah, look, right. there goes the neighbor's house. And so, yes, uh, whisk away. And all these people that she knew, she recognized sort of because they looked like them, but maybe not. And, of course, I was always literal. I remember uh, all these movies with, of course, Judy Garland. I remember, you know, Burt Lahr, mm-hmm. uh, you know, all the, Ray Bolger, all these actors. I remember seeing their movies like, oh, that's them. Yeah. And to think oh, how fun it would have been to be on that set with these actors who had all that experience, all those great stories. The Munchkins, for crying out loud, how fun was that? Yeah. And everybody has a dog. Toto was there. You know, it was everything I just loved. Then you get back home and you realize, oh, there's no place like home. Right. It's nice to travel, but no place like home. Yeah, but they kind of lied to her. She could have just clicked her heels at the beginning. They, she they wouldn't have learned. She would not have learned. That's what it. Did she really Life learn? lessons. What did she, she learned. She, that she learned was, to kill a witch. Well, <laughs> exactly. A witch. See, evil. Bad. But was she evil? Oh, Have you she read was the horrible. book Wicked? Oh, my goodness. That's propaganda. That is, <laughs> is fake, fake news. news. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's See, a new spin. It's a, the that's whole right. Thing. Oh, my goodness. They're trying to cover their tracks. Yeah. And, and um, how about this? Buddy Epson was supposed to be yes. uh, the Tin Man, right? Absolutely. He did two weeks of filming. And, of course, they did this uh, uh, aluminum dust. Uh-huh. They put some cream on his face. And what could go wrong? His, Hello. Hello. <laughs> Who was in charge? You know, no where one. were the safety people then that we have now? Uh, Buddy Epson was in uh, Branson doing his one-man show years ago. And so uh, he wanted to come out to Silver Dollar City. So they said, Terry, would you please escort Mr. Epson around the park. Oh, if I have to. Oh, uh, gosh. Okay. How old is he? Oh, my gosh. Okay. Do I have yeah. to buy his lunch? He was wonderful. He, we would stop and he'd say, now, right over here. This is where Irene Ryan did the funniest thing. It was amazing. Wow. Yeah. And, of course, uh, I knew in advance that he was going to be in Branson. So I had ordered a picture uh, from the Wizard of Oz of him as the Tin Man. Oh. And I had him sign it with silver ink. Uh-huh. He was so thrilled about that. And Got it in his lungs. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, yeah it went right the, well it, in the vein because, you know, the goes yeah. right, you know, it was a horrible right there. His fingers just soaked right in. It was in a reaction because, you know, it was still in his chemistry. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, so he ended his show early. But, yeah, I got his autograph and sold yeah, it. Yeah, well, there you go. Yeah. Uh, no, no, that's rumors, <laughs> conjecture. So, yeah, so that was great fun. But, yeah, what fun. And then I wrote to him several times during the years after that, you know. Uh-huh. And he, uh, I'd gotten some pictures of him as uh, Buddy, as, or as uh, Jed Clampett at Silver Dollar City that he signed and wrote the most oh, beautiful fun. inscription. So, yeah. yeah. So uh, we, we, we de- developed a friendship, and it was all good. Oh, it was all great. good. So, yeah, there see? Go. And again, you know. All comes but, back to the Wizard of Oz, yeah. That's right. So, Terry, when you wake up in the morning. Yes. Uh, what do you do to get ready to go, uh, to get in the right mindset? Do you have, like, a, a routine? Oh, yes, of course. I get up, and it's a frame of mind. I got to get ready to go. And where do I go? I mm-hmm. take our four dogs outside, and we all have our own tree. And we go. Oh, that's nice. Yes, it is. You we share do. one tree? Oh, no, no, no. We each have our own. You know, uh-huh. hey, this is mine because we mark our territory. And, of yeah. course, it's dark, you know, that time. But I do. I ever, And I do. I wake up. Hi, I'm this happy guy. Honest mm-hmm. to goodness, it makes my wife so mad. She likes to sleep in. I like to wake up early. I live oh, no. on four, five hours of sleep. Oh, as do I. Yeah. yeah. See, I'm not yeah. alone. I'm not alone. Alone, alone, Well. Alone. So, yeah. <laughs> anyway, but yes. Oh, I do. I, and uh, I do. I, it's all take the dogs outside, turn on the coffee. Uh-huh. Uh, also, I work a lot and so i'm not home a lot okay uh my wife works very hard she's had real jobs all of her life yeah, for 20 you. years oh yes yeah. hello yeah for 20 years she managed the two pizza huts in branson her uncle built them here in branson oh. yeah. and then after she retired from that she tried several things and for 17 years now though she has licensed our home with the state of missouri to have an in-home daycare oh well that's fun and so she has a lot of pressure on her mm-hmm. 10 kids a day yeah. five days a week 17 years that's why weekends were made for Michelob yeah okay yeah, I know I used to be a bouncer at a daycare oh my so goodness I just, oh yeah, it's I horrible the door oh it's horrible. awful yeah so anyway so whenever my wife gets up I want everything done for her the dishes have been washed and put away the laundry is all washed dried folded and put away the trash is taken out everything is done for that woman and so and what thanks do I get I get yeah. nice meals oh well there you go and uh, honey I love you every now and then isn't that wonderful yeah, that's what it's all yeah. about from her from her. Yeah. Oh, well, that's nice. That yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, from her, yeah. <laughs> I'm at the oh, meals yeah. and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. well, a few meals. Yeah, I, 
by. But, you know. uh-huh. No, it's it's all good. You know, but that, that's that's who I am. I want it all done because I don't want her to have to worry about all that other nonsense. Focus yeah. on the daycare because it's it's rather yeah, it, it's it's intense. Are you a creature of habit? I am. Oh yeah. Like I I have yeah. everything mapped out oh, almost yes. to the minute, and I think that comes a lot from being on stage, especially oh, at yes. our venue, yes. because dinner starts at fifty two, yeah. and this announcement comes on at three after, and this, right. you know timing timing is the key, and I do everything is regimented, and I'm. Honest to goodness, to the second, because I have Until. all these places I have to be. Whenever I leave Silver Dollar City, and I've got a gig down at Big Cedar, because I've been with them now for 12 years, it is 12 and a half miles. It takes me 22 minutes to get, get down there. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. And so I've got to pace myself and make sure. And I pray every day, Lord, let there not be any traffic. Let there not be an accident. Lord, yeah. let, you know, all these things. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, it, the only time I'm late is when I have to come downtown. Because oh, you yes. can't predict the traffic. Never, you know? ever. Yeah. No. Yeah. But a, a lot of people at our show will remark because I'll say, I'll be there at 22 minutes after. And I show up at 22 minutes yeah. after. Yeah. Or if, if I have an appointment at, at 4 o'clock, I show up at 4 Not five minutes before, no, no, not no. five minutes yeah. after. Drives my wife crazy because oh, yeah. she's much more lax and that sort yeah. of thing. But my whole day is just budgeted. Everything. And, I even budget my breaks at Silver Dollar City. Mm-hmm. I have an afternoon break. I had a 20-minute break. Uh, this was last. Today is, of course, Monday. Last Friday, on my afternoon break at Silver Dollar City, I got in my car. I drove down to Classic Motor Inn, did an interview just like this right here on the radio. It was great fun. I left there quickly, quickly, quickly. Went just up the road to Treasure Lake. I had a, an appearance there as Barney Five. So, mm-hmm. yeah. And so, boom, boom, boom. And right back 20 yeah. minutes later. Boom, yeah, right I map there. it out. I know that I can do this on the way to this, on the way to this. And we that's stack the, it. That's, that's, that's our go. life. It's but how I, it works. That's why I, I it love makes this me happy. business. Me too. Yeah. I mean, I really am. That is one thing on cruise ships that I like mm. is oh, that yeah. it's very regimented on time. Right. You know, everything is. Dinner right. is exactly at this time. Nothing right. gets messed up. Isn't that so. wonderful? Oh, I love it. I, I do too. That's mm-hmm. really what I live for because I, it has kept me focused. If I have downtime, that drives me nuts. Me too. You know, and I really, because no, 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 I've yeah. got to be. And it makes my wife mad because we'll sit down and watch a movie with me. Okay. And oh, okay. Okay, I'm going to put a load of laundry in. I'm yeah. watching it. I can see it from here. Yeah. And I have the iPad looking up facts about that movie yeah. while I'm yeah. waiting on doing know? something on my phone. Yes. Oh, Did you yeah. know Buddy Epson was in Wizard of Oz? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Almost died. Constantly. Terry Sanders was a friend of his. You know? and if you watch, if you watch uh, a movie on Amazon... Uh, now they have a little pop-up thing that will come up on your iPad and stuff yes. as you're watching it. And so constantly I'm like, oh. And we're pausing the movie we're watching so I can say, oh, this oh just said gosh. that so-and-so was in also in this movie. Yeah. And it drives my wife crazy. Yeah, funny. Or she'll listen to me. I listen to two audiobooks at the same time. And it drives her nuts. Oh, my. So, yeah. Oh, my. Mm-hmm. But, you you're know, we don't have a lot of spare time. So. No, no, no. And, well, it is. It's just about time management. And that's what we do. Mm-hmm. I love that. Good, good for oh, you. There you go. I like even more now. You know, I used to think you were so so. Now I really yeah, like. I don't you. even like myself. So that's really? Oh, yeah. That's too bad. No, right now you're good. You're I'm on trying. The good side. I'm right. trying. Oh, that's what my wife says. I'm really trying. Hey Terry, what advice would you give yourself, your younger self? Let's say like 20 years ago, or when? Oh yeah. my. Let's say uh, when you were 20. When let's I was that. 20, um, focus more. Mm-hmm. If I had mm-hmm. been more focused then, I would be further ahead than I am right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, still in the business. But probably doing more, you know, mm-hmm. yeah, just because, you know, I was distracted and it's like, you know, yeah, it was just youth is wasted on the young. That is so true. Yeah. And it was, you know, not that I was a bad guy, bad kid. It's just, you know, if I would have really concentrated more because it is show business. There is a business side to this. Yeah. And so, uh, yeah. But, you know, I'm thankful where I'm at right now. I'm in a good spot. You know, I, I go to Walmart and they know me. Hey, Homer, because that's I've been Homer Lee for mm-hmm. all And you're wearing years. the name tag. That's true. And well, the yeah. whole outfit, you know, because yeah, if you have I, the blue vest on. Exactly. You have, you're greeting people. Right. So it's Hi, kind thank of Thank you. Job. Thanks for coming. Aren't you somebody? I used to be. Thank you. I was on Hee Haw. Yeah. Yes, do you know I who I think I am? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that was a big thing. I got so tickled. In 1989, Hee Haw, the producer and director of Hee Haw, came to Branson. And they came to the Brasher Music Show. And they watched me. And they talked to me at intermission. They talked to me after the show. They were very nice. It was nice to meet you. Well, nice to meet you, Terry. Thank you so much. Next day was my day off at Silver Dollar. My boss from Silver Dollar City calls up. His name is Jim Moskew. He said, Terry, the, these guys from uh, Hee Haw here to see you. I said, no, no, I saw them last night. No, no, no. They want to see you out here working people outside and how that works. Mm-hmm. I said, oh, okay. So I got that my car. Yeah. yeah. Went over there. And that afternoon, that evening, I went to the Brasher Music Show. And Janice Brasher said, here, here's a note. It's from Mr. Sam Lovello. Yeah. Anyway, you're supposed to call him a 
you know, so I called him and he said, uh, we're going to see you in two weeks in uh, in Nashville. Oh, wow. I was so excited. I filmed 13 episodes in Nashville, Tennessee of Hee Haw. At that time, it was the longest running variety show on TV. Mm-hmm. I remember watching it. Uh, it was, it was very thing. exciting. Oh, I know. Yeah. And everyone there, uh, heroes. I worked with Minnie Pearl. I love Minnie Pearl. She was delightful. Everyone was great. But I got tickled because people want to argue with you whenever you know better. But when people, this is my pet peeve. When they know better than you. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess you're moving down there to Nashville, ain't you? Yeah. Well, no, no, sir. We're going to film uh, you know, 13 episodes. No, no, it's on every week. You got to be down there. Yeah, right, right. Uh, and of course, and you're trying to, you know, and then they just don't get it, no matter what you do. Mm-hmm. I said, you know, you're probably right. I'll have to sell a few things, maybe a kidney. <laughs> yeah. 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 Uh-huh. But it makes me, that's what fake really. Fake news. Fake news. We're back to fake, fake news. Fake news. Oh, at Christmas time several years ago, out at Silver Dollar City, a lady got into. Uh, discourse with me she was so upset about certain things that weren't happening i said well ma'am it's christmas time this is why we open up later in the day so we can stay later so you can see all the beautiful lights and all this this place has just gone downhill since the hershans sold it oh yeah i said ma'am i know jack and pete very well they're family friends pete and my wife and i and his wife we've gone to church together and jack i've got beautiful letters from jack they they still own no they sold it you Uh don't know what you're talking and now it was bad enough that she was wanting to be that adamant about it the worst part of this was, I said, I finally ended up, I said, ma'am, I'm going to have to walk away. I wish you well. God bless you. And I uh-huh. walked away because, I mean, she just wanted to argue. Yeah. So I walked down to the train depot because at that point I was in charge of the train depot, the crowd control and all that. Well, there's a man down there and he's sitting over there and he's smoking. Now, we're not supposed to smoke over there. I said, sir, I'm sorry. You're not supposed to smoke over here. Uh, I guess you want me to move back in the very back, I guess. And I said, no, sir, it's okay. And I was just upset. Well, I look around. Here comes this lady. She went to that man who was smoking. It was her husband. The whole reason she argued uh, with me was to distract me so he could get to the front of the line so oh. their grandkids would not have to wait in line to ride the train. Oh, isn't that nice? It was wonderful. So I called security and had him kicked off. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And well, banned you know, from the park don't forever. Ever, don't ever. Yes. Oh, yes. Mm-hmm. Oh, banning. Because I, I, I've got power. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, 38 years, I know people. Do you, <laughs> do you no. know who you think you are? Uh, no. no. No, I, I had that with somebody that uh, my very first week of the actual show back in 2005, 2006, mm-hmm. I was walking down the employee entrance and there's a gentleman coming down on crutches through the loading dock. Oh, my. And I said, you can't be down here. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's okay. And I said, no, no, it's not okay. You could get hurt. <laughs> Uh, and he's like, no, it's fine. It's fine. And I said, please, let me help get you up there, you know, if yeah. you get to the right place. It'll be fine. Just arguing with me. And I thought, it's my first week. I'm not going to right. rock the boat, literally. Literally. <laughs> and so then I'm sitting there backstage and they said, oh, we just wanted to let you know that Jack Hershon is out here watching the show. He's the man out there with the crutch. Uh. <laughs> it was him. It was him. So we See, went, we had a good laugh about good. it oh, because I had no idea. Oh, no, 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 no. no clue. And that's they're the so nicest funny. people. They are the so. nicest people. I, yeah. I absolutely adore them. Uh, he's Jack hilarious. and Sherry. Uh, but yeah, and he's just like, and unassuming. You know, he walks out there. Here's this man who's done quite well for himself. He's got a cowlick. You know, you yeah. can afford to get you know someone to cut your hair the right way, but no, but that's right. who he is, you know. Yeah, and they he's just, just kind of hang around, and, yeah. and they, yeah, we have a great time. And when they come yeah. to the showboat, you know, they they sit where regular guests sit. We oh, have yeah. a big, huge VIP table, and no, no, yeah, they want to sit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sherry was on park uh, yesterday over at Silver Dollar City, and uh, she's so funny because she brought friends with her. She is a, a mature woman. I won't say her age, but she's a mature woman, you know, mm-hmm. and. Uh, the energy level that she has, you and I combined will never have as much energy as she has. Yeah. She amazes us. I mean, she's just bubbly. She's giddy. She's running over here and oh, over here. I'm going to run over this. I'm going to do this. She's amazing. And, yeah. and that's where we should be. When we're that age, when we're that mature, we uh-huh. should be just like that. Yeah, they are. They're, they're yeah. incredible. Yeah. So, Terry, thanks yes. for talking with us on Branson Talk. You're Gosh, the premier she... guest of season oh. four. Season How about that? Four. Yeah. Oh, wow. 200 and some of these things. Can that's you believe something. that? I'm thrilled. I'm surprised I'm thrilled. there's that many people that will talk to me. Hey, to well. Tell you the truth. But, but thanks for being with us on Branson you, Talk Christopher here. James. And come oh. see Terry at the uh, Petsy Klein and, and friends. Silver Dollar City. Silver Dollar at Christmas City. time, I'm in charge of Santa Claus. That's right. I'm yeah. Clarence Peabody. Yes, Santa's helper. What who, who wants, who, who oh, gets. Oh, yes. Who Very is. nice. Very nice. Well, thanks again. And thanks for listening Thank to Branson Talk. Uh, bye-bye. Bye-bye. I hope you enjoyed this week's interview with Terry Wayne Sanders. I had a great time talking with him. I'm sure this is the first of many, many conversations that we'll have. We had a great time. We actually ended up talking for about another 45 minutes after the episode. We had a lot actually in common. It was kind of cool to uh, 
get to speak with Terry one-on-one out of characters. Both of us, just two people sitting there talking about what it's like to live in Brants and our experiences and so on. And, uh, well, be sure to check out Terry, of course. And also, as I mentioned at the top of the podcast, we will be featuring some of the mini little mini-sodes, mini-pod-sodes. I don't know what the word would be for it, but mini-pods. Can we call it that? Is that? That's nothing. Okay. But mini little episodes that we'll be releasing with individual questions that Terry and I discussed in length after the main interview. And as always, go to BransonTalk.com. Follow us, BransonTalk.com. You'll see all the episodes. Subscribe to us on Facebook. All you have to do on Facebook is look for All Things Branson, where we cover everything in and around the Branson area. But most of all, please support Branson, Missouri. And just come by. Have a good time. We've got something for everything. As we say here at All Things Branson, our lives are your family's vacation. I'm Christopher James signing off. Listen for us next week. Bye-bye.